lamprey. Mm -hmm. It has a head region which goes all the way to the back of the gill slits. The branchial region is part of the head and then the trunk region and a caudal or tail region. Where does the tail region start? The cloaca. The cloaca, yeah. So everything behind the cloaca is the tail. Um, Postanal tail, right? Okay. Um, there are dorsal fins. There's a caudal fin. The fin rays are not easy to see, but if you look here, you can see kind of little ridges in the fin, and there's connective tissue supports for the fin that are the fin rays. Um, and sometimes you get a nice slice, like this here, that will actually show you the fin rays a little bit better. If you can't see it all, um, let me know, because otherwise I'm just going to assume you're seeing it. Especially you folks are in there, so there's some fin rays. Um, buccal funnel is this nice funnel at the front end of the animal. That's what they attach onto the fish with. Um, there are papillae, these little finger-like structures that surround the opening of the buccal funnel. There's horny teeth on the inside. Horny just means they're keratinized. And um, the tongue or piston is this structure here. And it's, it's a little obscure if you don't actually make an effort to separate it out. But you can see that this has got some horny teeth at the tip of it. And that's what's used to actually rasp a hole in the side of the fish that they're feeding on. Oops, right there. Um, mouth opening. So, Technically, the mouth opening is behind the tongue or piston, leading back into the cavity there. And, okay. The outside, top of the head, is this hole right there? What would that be? Nostril. nostril. And it's in the middle, so it's called median. That's the median nostril. And right behind it, and not showing up super great on this particular specimen, but I'll use it anyway, is this lot more lightly pigmented area right there, and that would be the pineal eye. pineal eye, sometimes called the third eye, and that's actually common to all vertebrates in some form or another. In us, it's become the pineal gland of the brain. Okay. Um, you may know lizards often have a third eye on top of their head. You can see it quite nicely on them. Um, lateral eyes don't look like much in a lamprey. That is a lateral eye right there, and they're not highly um, developed externally, but you can see them internally there. Um, uh, so they're kind of, particularly in these fixed specimens, they get kind of opaque with the skin over the eye. Um, those are just our regular eyes. External gill slits would be here. So these are the external gill slits like that. And um, what else? Lateral line system. Ah, what is the lateral line system anyway? It detects motion and movement. Detects motion and a movement, particularly of the water. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they're detecting water movements around them. And it gives them sensory feedback on their own movements through the water, but also if there's some disturbance nearby from a predator or prey, well, whatever. Okay. And in terms of seeing it, you can see these pores like this on the head. Clearly, distinct, and that's openings into the lateral line system. Okay. Um, myomeres. Myomeres don't look very impressive from the outside of a lamprey, but if you look at a slice through it, let's see if this find a good one here. Depends on the This is probably about the best we're going to do. You can see these segmental blocks of muscle, and you can see how they're W-shaped like that, and the point at the tip and middle of the W points forward. Okay. So here are the myomeres, and they do this, and the point is pointing forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. Again, let me know if I skip something that you need. Ooh, cloaca, fortunately we have one. Okay. So the cloaca is this opening here and the cloaca in Latin means sewer. And it's called the sewer because everything dumps into it. Pee, 
goop, everything, into the sewer. Um, and so that cavity is the cloaca. Within the cavity, there's a little um, papilla or finger-like process that pokes out, and that would be the urogenital papilla. So uro, urinary, and genital genital products, um, sperm in particular, and the males come out at the urogenital papilla. Okay. Um, and then the anus is not um, coming out of the urogenital papilla, but it's an opening that's in front of the urogenital papilla, and I've just got the probe in it here. It's, you can't really see it, but you can extend a probe forward into it like that. And that's the end of the digestive tract. Um, cloacal aperture is kind of a funny thing. If you think of the cloaca as like a cup, the top of the cup, the opening, is the aperture. So it's distinguished. It's kind of a silly distinction. All right. And then we come back to our sagittal and cross sections. Actually, one thing. Can somebody kind of keep me up to date on time? For some reason, I cannot see the clock there, so I have no idea what time it is. 25. 25 after? Mm -hmm. Oh, so we're good. We got plenty of time. All right. I just don't want to run over. Um, so when we look at a, a sagittal section, remember sagittal is down the midline, separating into left and right halves. Um, the notochord is very prominent, this structure here running along like this. Okay. So these guys have got a nice, well-developed notochord. Um, some people had sections where it didn't show up very well because the slice went either to the left or, left or right side and missed the notochord. But it does run all the way along from right below the brain. And that actually is, I guess, a good point to make. Notice this is not a cephalochordate. The notochord doesn't go all the way to the front of the head. The notochord does stop right there about the middle of the level of the brain. And that's, that's the true anterior end. Um, there's the brain, and it's not very impressive in these guys, all this little blip right in there, that is the brain. So lampreys are not known for being really brainy animals, but they do have a brain. Um, and then continuing back from the brain, and you know, I don't know if we can see it on this one. I've got several here, so I can switch. Well, you can kind of see it there. Is right in here is spinal cord. So this is the spinal cord. Pulling out a little bit, running along. And notice spinal cord is what? Dorsal or ventral to the notochord? Dorsal. dorsal. It's above the notochord, and that's the same as the dorsal ulnar nerve cord was in our amphioxus and our tunicate, and that's true in all chordates. Okay. Notochord is below the neural tube or dorsal ulnar nerve cord. Um, Chondrocranium. Chondro means what? Anyone remember chondrocytes back in introzo? No. Chondro means cartilage. Okay. So chondrocranium means cartilage skull. And the chondrocranium is basically the whole system of cartilages that supports structures in the head region. It includes around the brain and the sense organs in particular. Okay. Um, in terms of what you can see, it's a little hard to really tell but if you feel with your probe, you'll feel little hard structures present in this region, and that's the chondrocranium surrounding sense organs and brain. Okay, it's right in there. Um, there's a nice diagram in, in Walker showing the whole chondrocranium and what it looks like. And I've, for years, wanted to get a prep like that, and I haven't been able to get a good lamprey and make a nice prep of it. So one of these years, it'll happen. Um, lingual cartilage, lingual means tongue. And so the lingual cartilage is the cartilage of the tongue, and that would be this structure right here. Um, it depends on how your section was made, whether you can actually see it or not. Sometimes it's hiding, but it basically extends from the tongue back, and it gives the muscles that move the tongue forward and back something to hold on to and move it. Okay, so that's the lingual cartilage. Um, the branchial basket are the cartilages that surround Branchial, the root branch means gill. And so the branchial basket are all of those cartilages in the gill region. And 
What you'll see in the sagittal sections are these little kind of reddish, harder set structures kind of running along here, like this, all the way along in here under the gill region, and that's all part of the branchial basket. Okay. Um, again, it would we don't really have a preparation that shows you the whole thing, but you're going to see little bits of cartilage surrounding the gills and all of that branchial basket. And what that does is it gives the muscles of the branchial region something to work against. They squeeze down, squish the water out, and then the cartilage is elastic and it kind of pops out again and sucks water in. And so the muscles squeeze, the cartilage pops out, and they can pump water in and out of the branchial region. Um, okay, branchial basket. Myomeres, we did that already. Um, myoseptic, what, what are myoseptic? Things dividing the myomeres? Yep, the septa, the connective tissue partition in between the, the myomeres. So those are the myoseptic. Um, Brain and spinal cord. Didn't we just do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I, it's because I'm following along. You may notice sometimes the same words come up twice, and that's because I'm just following along the walker. And if they mention the same thing twice, it ends up in there twice. So it's okay. Olfactory sac. Okay. So um, an olfactory sac is the nose. It's the actual sensory epithelium of the nose in a sac, and that would be right here, this animal. pretty distinctive thing, something that's very easy to stick a pin in in a practical exam kind of situation because it's so distinctive and I feel like it should be obvious and everyone should know it. So I'll just point that out. That's olfactory sac there. And in these guys, it's kind of interesting. So the median nerus leads down into the olfactory sac like that. And then if the olfactory sac actually has an outpocketing that continues down further can be seen right here in front of the notochord like this and around down under the tip of the notochord and that's called the hypophysial pouch right here like this you see that okay okay again let me know if you're saying I'm trying to get further in a view but it's just hard to tell so that's the hypophysial sac or pouch and what that does is it allows the pressure changes that are happening in the branchial region as they breathe and pump water in and out of the gills to also move water in and out of the nose and so that it can smell. And you can imagine if you're trying to find prey, fish to hook onto, being able to smell water is important. Smell good? Smell well? Um, all right. Pineal eye, we already looked at. Lateral eyes, lens. Okay. So I will show you sections here that had eyes. And then there's this one anyway. And this one did as well. Um, it's hard to find all the parts of the eye on these preparations we have. This is a section through the lateral eyes and you can see them there. The lenses were, oh this one actually still does have a lens. Look at that. You can see it right there. That's the lens of the eye. And then the back of the eye inside is the retina. I'm not going to worry you too much over these parts on the lamprey because we're going to see them all in the eyes in our sharks much better and bigger. And we'll do a, a full dissection of the eye in the shark. But there is the lens just to see it. Um, so pigmented layer and retina, again, don't worry too much about it. It's just the back of the eye. The inner ear, I don't actually grab the slice that goes through the inner ear unless I got No, but um, right behind the eyes on either side of the brain, if you get the perfect slice, and it's in the, in the book, you'll see these little kind of things that look like Mickey Mouse ears sticking off to the side from the brain, and that's the otic capsule, the part of the skull that holds the inner ear, and the inner ear is inside of it. And again, we'll see all of this better. It often shows up nicely on the ambicete sections. If you get the right section right through the inner ear, you can see them sitting off to the side of the brain. Um, these guys don't have an external ear, but they do have an inner ear, so they have a sense of balance, and they can have um, some sound perception, but not really well developed. Okay, how am I doing on time? 
Um, it's 35 past. Okay, we got 15 minutes. Um, I just want to make sure I can get to the um, the heart because that's the confusing thing for people. So um, oral cavity is just the space around the tongue. We've already seen that in here. Okay. The oral glands can be seen in a cross section through the head region. I know I had one. Yeah, here. So these these structures here on the sides are the oral glands, and these are the anticoagulant glands that keep the blood from um, from co coagulating, so that they'll keep being able to feed. You see those? Okay. All right. So cool. This is where we need to start following things along. Um, so if we look at the, um, the tongue, the piston, and follow back from it, we get to this region behind the tongue where you can kind of go one of two ways. If you are, hold on, let me just see if I can get my curve in there, I will show you. Hmm, this one doesn't want to be in, so let's try this one. Yeah. Try to grab a few, so I've just got one to try. Hmm. It's being difficult. Come on, Lamprey, behave yourself. Okay, I see where we are. All right, so here's the tongue. And if you follow back from the tongue, you can end up into this space right here. Okay. And this space runs along dorsally. Okay. Above the respiratory tube, below the notochord. So this is where the blood goes. And this would be the esophagus. Okay, that's the esophagus. Um, but if you just take a slight detour and go more ventrally, you end up here in this space. And this space is where water goes for the respiration. And this would be the respiratory, respiratory tube. tube. Okay. And lampreys are, are kind of unusual compared to most fishes because most fishes, they don't have an esophagus running by the pharynx where their respiration goes because they take water in their mouth, food could come in with the water, and then they just run it back to their esophagus. But these guys have their mouth stuck on the side of another fish that they're feeding on. Blood is coming in, and they need to just send that blood by all the respiratory apparatus on its way to the intestine. So what they do is they've got this separate respiratory tube, and the respiratory tube is actually pulling water in through the external gill slits and through the internal gill slits, and then sending it back out again. So it's a back and forth, back and forth across the gills. And that's how they breathe when they're attached to the side of a fish. So the respiratory tube runs along here ventrally like this. And if we look into it, we can see that it has an internal gill slit there. And that internal gill slit leads into a branchial pouch where the actual gills are. And then if I continue, eventually it's going to come out the side the external gill slit. So on a lot of these sagittal sections, what's happened is the slice hasn't passed exactly right down the middle, and you end up with some gills that are showing up on the side of the respiratory tube. So there's a respiratory tube going right down the middle, and there's some gills here on the side of the respiratory tube. Okay, good? If you've got questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to plunge ahead. Okay. Um, so coming back from the esophagus here, then, is the intestine, which you'll usually see as this kind of dangly thing that's been 
cut off. Um, there's part of it, there's part of it there. These guys have a really straight, simple intestine. There's no stomach, there's no convolutions, um, it's no cecum, it just goes straight back because blood has got to be about the easiest thing in the world to digest. It's already pretty much pre-digested. A few enzymes and you're good to go. So they just pass it along, digest it, absorb what they need, and out it goes to the cloaca. Um, there is a spiral valve in the intestine, and that just means a little fold that kind of spirals around that increases surface area. And this is a primitive character for vertebrates. We see it also in sharks and some of the more primitive bony fishes, and then it gets lost in um, more advanced bony fishes and tetrapods. Okay. Um, the liver. Everybody found the liver. There it is. Okay. Um, usually a fairly large organ, ventral in the body cavity. Um, pleuroperitoneal cavity is the fancy name for the body cavity or coelo here. And pleuro lung or it's the lung cavity in mammals. The peritoneal cavity is the gut cavity in mammals. And since these guys don't have lungs, they just have one big cavity. We call it the pleuroperitoneal cavity, which is, I know, a bit of a mouthful. It's the same thing as the sea lung, the body cavity. Um, vellum, internal, we kind of talked about all of those things already. Good. So we are to the heart. Okay. So the heart of a lamprey consists of three chambers. The first one is called the sinus venosus and that's getting blood coming from the veins, the cardinal veins, into it. And then it goes to the atrium, there's one atrium, and then from the atrium to the ventricle. What's unusual about these guys is that the heart's very asymmetrical left to right, and in particular, the atrium is largely on the left side of the body and the ventricle on the right side of the body. So in your sagittal sections, um, you often just have one or the other, and not both, okay, which is why I got um, many sectional sections here to hopefully be able to show you all of this. Um, the other thing, and maybe I'll look at the cross section for a second. I know I've got, got the good one through a heart. Here we go. Um, what you'll often see when you look at um, the heart is that there's two different colors to it. And in our specimens, almost always, the ventricle is going to be the lighter colored section of the heart and the atrium the darker colored and that's really helpful just to get oriented since i told you the ventricles on the right side and the atriums on the left what we know here is that this is ventricle that's atrium this is the front or anterior surface of this section here okay ventricle on the right atrium on the left and this is a really nice section because you can see here the common cardinal vein from the left side leading across over to the right and dropping down into this tube here that runs between the atrium and ventricle. And that tube is the sinus venosus. Okay, so do you see that? I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance to see this. Okay. And then from the sinus venosus, there's an opening that leads into the atrium, and I might even be able to get the probe there to go through it into the atrium. And that's called the sinoatrial aperture, because it's a hole from the sinus venosus into the atrium. Okay. See that? And then there is another passage from the atrium over to the ventricle called the atrioventricular aperture, which I can't show you in this section. Um, but if we look here, we may be able to see it. Yep. So this is um, a sagittal section here. There's atrium. There's ventricle, the lighter colored. And I can poke a probe right through there from atrium into ventricle. This is the atrioventricular aperture here, leading from the atrium. And then the ventricle itself, let's see, I think it showed up better. Maybe on the 
this one. The ventricle gives rise to a blood vessel that runs forward under the whole gill region, and that's called the ventral aorta. And I think I'm just going to show you in the cross section through the gills here, if I can. Yep, there we go. So you'll see it right there, this opening right there, that's the ventral aorta. And so that's carrying blood from the heart to the gills. That blood is not oxygenated because it's coming from the heart, it's just come back from the body. Then it goes to the gills, gets oxygenated, and then it's going to get distributed to the whole body. And the vessel that distributes it is up at the dorsal region above the gills, right below the notochord, and that's the dorsal aorta. So this vessel here is the dorsal aorta above the gill region. We good? I know it's a little, it's kind of fast and furious, but um, some of these other things you're not going to see well. Carotid arteries are up in the head region and they're just the front end of the dorsal aorta carrying blood to the head. The um, caudal artery and caudal vein are in the tail region and they're the um, continuation of the dorsal aorta in the caudal artery and the um, drainage going into the common cardinals in the caudal vein that you find in the tail region. So they just get a different name there. And we'll go over these vessels in much more detail in the shark. So um, I'd like you to know the heart for these guys and dorsal and ventral aorta. The others, it's great if you can find them, but don't worry too much about them. Okay? But the heart, do, do pay attention to. Um, so I'll, I'll skip those other vessels. Last but not least, we have um, kidneys. And these guys have so-called opistonephric kidneys. Opisto means back. So it's just the back end of the body, that region of the kidney that's developed into the adult kidney. And you may remember there's a pronephros in the um, amicete and also in the, um, in the frog tad uh, tadpole, the embryo that we looked at. And the kidneys hang down as a flap like this on the side of the body cavity. And you usually have to lift the gonad up. So this is the testis I'm lifting up. To see it, if you have a female, you have to lift up the ovary. You can see the kidney as this flap. If you're not seeing it, you're probably just not far enough, far enough back because it doesn't run all the way forward. Okay, you see that in here? That flap is the kidney, the opistonephric kidney. And running along the bottom side of the opistonephric kidney is this slightly distinct whitish structure, and that's the archinephric duct. And the archinephric duct is the duct that carries the urine back to the cloaca. Archie means old, like archaeology, and it's because this is kind of the original or ancient urinary duct. And we'll see it also in sharks. It actually ends up being in mammals, what turns into the vas deferens in males, and in females it's lost. Okay, and we'll talk about that whole story. But you see that okay? Yeah. All right. Okay, perfect. Um, urogenital sinus, I'm not going to try to show you, but urogenital sinus is just the space where the two archinephric ducts come together and join with the genital ducts inside the urogenital papilla. Um, ovary and testis, well, there's a testis. And just in case you haven't seen a female, there is ovary. And in general, we're gonna see in all the vertebrates we look at, ovaries always just look like a whole bunch of eggs. Okay. Um, and genital pores, oh, genital pores. Okay, let's do that and find my cloaca. Another issue, but... Um, There are pores that lead into the cloaca from the body cavity, and I may or may not be able to do this, but we'll give it a try here. If I pass a probe back, uh, I'm not really thinking that's coming at the right place. Probes are really good for probing things, but they don't always necessarily come out in the right place. And that, I'm not, okay. I don't want to be in the 
intestine, which is there. That would be the anus. Don't want to get your pores confused with. But the, I'll just tell you, there are pores, because I'm not having much luck right now getting the probe to go through them, that lead um, from the body cavity out into the cloaca. And those are the, the general pores. And in the females, oh, is that a male? That would be the problem. And do I have a cloaca in my female? No. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, here we go. Maybe I can actually get it to work in the female. In the females, the eggs don't go out the urogenital papilla. Instead, there is a um, genital pore where the eggs actually exit from the body cavity and exit the animal so they can spawn. That's it. Quick tour of the lamprey. Um, I hope that was helpful. I like to do this in general at the end of